My name is Sean Lane, and I am an actor and arts educator who has been working in the field of arts education since 1989. I have performed for students of all ages in thousands of schools, museums, and theaters. I have worked with teachers and students to integrate drama into the curriculum with nationally recognized organizations such as Wolf Trap and the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. Our program today will explore a theatrical technique known as Tableau. At its most basic level, Tableau simply requires students to pose and freeze in order to capture and reflect on a moment in time. In essence, they create a living picture or photograph. This dramatic technique can be integrated with other subjects, such as history, language arts, or visual arts, to create a meaningful and effective lesson plan. I will be demonstrating one way Tableau can be used in the classroom today. The biggest question a teacher might have at this point is, why would I want to use this technique in my classroom? My answer would be that students often study histories without recognizing that real people were involved in real events. Similarly, students often study literature or art without linking personally to the story or visual. To create tableaus, students reach inside themselves to imagine people's motivations, analyze situations, and physically demonstrate their understanding. This work results in a powerful sense of empathy for the moment portrayed. In addition, tableau experiences build students' abilities to work collaboratively and creatively within structured constraints. Tableau work also helps students develop essential learning and social skills, such as the abilities to compromise, cooperate, focus, and practice self-discipline. And finally, tableaus can be a powerful tool for assessing student learning. In our program today, we'll be watching several segments from a video workshop the Kennedy Center has produced called Living Pictures, a theatrical technique for learning across the curriculum which demonstrates a process every teacher can use to lead students in successfully creating and assessing tableaus. Let's watch the opening section of that video right now. What tableau does is take a magnifying glass and hold it right over one small moment in time You're going to create a picture, a tableau. I am a jacket about to provide warmth for a tired slave. I am the moon that breaks at night. Through tableau, students develop a powerful understanding of and empathy for the people and events they are studying. So this time when I count to three, make sure your eyes are on a focus point and your bodies are frozen. You ready? One, two, three, freeze. Tableau is a frozen picture. When used in the theater, actors are frozen on the stage. The curtain might open and the audience views actors frozen in place. This allows the audience time to truly absorb the moment, that opening moment. Tableau is also used at the end of a scene, perhaps. Right before the curtain closes, the actors will freeze so that the audience has a chance to look at what everybody was doing, to really absorb, again, that one moment in time before the curtain closes Find your focus point, lock your eyes on it, and freeze your bodies. In this video, you'll observe my work with three classes to create tableaus that help them focus on a moment in time related to their study of art, history, or literature. It's synthesis. It's taking all your background knowledge and pulling it together and creating something new. Show us with your face, show us with your body. I also like that kids were asked to feel and to think and develop empathy. 
The way she's standing, is she low level, medium level, or high level? There's a, so much integration involved in this. And also it's very kinesthetic, so we're reaching children in, in multiple ways in one lesson. Okay, I'll be wait, I could, I could trip and I could go like that. I feel that tableau is almost the magic wand of theatrical techniques. It really just pulls in almost anything you can imagine. It's extremely versatile. We can use it in almost any subject area. Tableau lesson plans follow a basic four-step process. Step one is preparation. Step two is creating the tableau. Step three is extending the tableau. And step four is closure. Let's walk through the four steps, starting with step one, called preparation. In order for students to be successful in tableau activities, they must understand and master basic acting skills. Two preparation activities help students achieve this end. The first preparation activity, called the actor's ritual, introduces and reinforces the tools and skills required for acting. It also helps students relax and focus before tableau activities. The actor's ritual is used to begin and end every tableau session. Let's take a look at some students participating in the activity. As you observe, notice the seriousness the work is given. Warm up. Actor's ritual. Body, voice, and imagination. We need to know the three tools actors use. The first tool that actors use is their body to show an audience they're someone or something different. The second tool an actor uses is their voice to tell an audience there's someone or something different. The third tool an actor uses is their imagination. imagination. That's right. A great way to remember those three tools is to do an acting ritual that will put those three words into our bodies. This is how we do it. We're going to start by bending all the way over and touching our shoes and slowly standing up. But keep your fingers on your legs. That reminds us that actors use their bodies. We're going to keep moving up and stop right here. This will remind us that actors use their Voice. voices. So take a deep breath and make a small sound when you let it out. Excellent job and keep on moving up and let's stop right here because actors use their imagination. imagination. So I want you to close your eyes and imagine that you are clearing out a space in your mind. Let's just sweep away everything that happened this morning Let's sweep away lunch. And then let's sweep away everything you're thinking about this afternoon. Any homework that you might have, what you're going to do when school lets out. Sweep it right out for now so we have a big, clear space to put some new information. Once you've done that, open your eyes. And you need to show me with your bodies that you can concentrate and cooperate. Two skills actors need. So to show me that you are capable of doing that, stretch your arms up high in the air. And then I'm going to ask you to keep your face blank. Don't make a smiley face. Don't laugh. Just bring your arms down and put them on the shoulder or the back of the person beside you. Excellent job. And then look to your right at everyone you are going to cooperate with. And look to your left at everyone you are going to cooperate with. Well done. Put your arms down. Let's try it again. This time, let's add a little music to help us focus and concentrate. Ready? I feel before we launch into the work of tableaus, it's extremely important to lead the students through some type of warm-up activity where the mood is set, we have a serious tone, and we start to work those muscles of focus and concentration. And we just bring all of the students who are out here, right here, in really close. So the warm-up activity that I use lets them know all of the skills I expect them to be working on and using in our lesson. But it also gives them a chance to start strengthening their muscles, their concentration skills, their focus skills. Just bring your arms down on the person 
shoulders or back beside you. Many times, drama is thought of as silly, unstructured, or lacking classroom management devices. This activity lays the foundation that we are approaching this work with seriousness, and it also provides a framework for classroom management. If students need to be reminded about self-control, the teacher will use acting terminology to remind students to control their voices and bodies. For example, a teacher might say, you're using your body in an inappropriate way right now. Could you show me you can control your movements? Or, I can hear you speaking. Actors are silent in this tableau. Show me you can control your voice. In this warm-up activity, music that has an almost meditational quality provides a nice background. It not only calms the students, but also helps to set a serious tone for the work that follows. Once the actor's ritual is complete, we move on to another preparation activity called the Concentration Challenge. I have noticed over the years, in my work with students of every grade and ability level, that it doesn't take much to distract someone in the middle of a drama activity, or science experiment, or math class for that matter. The opening of a door, the sound of a voice in the hall, or a comment from a fellow classmate is all it takes for concentration to go out the window. Concentration is an essential skill that actors regularly work to sharpen and refine. The most challenging part in creating tableaus is for students to be able to freeze their bodies for an extended period of time and to maintain their concentration. So this activity is essential. It is divided into three levels, from beginner to expert. At the beginning level, the teacher slowly walks around the circle and looks each student in the eye without saying anything. If students take their eyes off their focus points or laugh, the teacher stops, encourages them to regain their concentration, and looks them in the eye again. This activity may be difficult for a class or for an individual. Teachers should remember not to treat the loss of concentration as a disruption or disobedience. It's merely a sign that the concentration muscle is weak and needs this exercise. Teachers should remind students to maintain their focus even when and if others cannot. Let's watch a class participate in level one of the concentration challenge. Warm up, concentration challenge. As you are standing there, I want you to find a point on the wall or curtain that's right in front of you. Don't turn your bodies. Just pick whatever's right in front of you. Pick a focus point that's in front of you so I can see your faces. Freeze your bodies and lock your eyes on that one point. If you are concentrating on that one point that will now call your focus point, I'll be able to walk in front of you, look you in the eyes, and you won't look back at me. You won't smile, you won't laugh, because you're concentrating on your focus point. Let's see who can do that today. Ready? Freeze your body. Lock your eyes on your focus point. Go. Good job, everybody blink, breathe, relax. Whew. Your muscles were strong. Concentration is like a muscle. The more we work it out, the stronger you'll get. You're starting out really strong. Concentration is also like a jewel, and it's worth one million dollars. If you smile or laugh, you give it away. Do you want to give it away? No. No, you want to guard it. You want to protect it. You don't want to just give it to someone. It's important to note that the activity is not complete until the teacher has walked around the entire circle. Students must maintain their focus from the beginning of the activity until its completion. Another important note is the use of the analogy that our concentration is like a jewel. And if we smile or laugh, 
we give the jewel away. Most students don't mind losing their concentration, but they absolutely do not want to lose their million dollar jewel. Another analogy used is that our concentration is like a muscle. The idea that our concentration can get stronger is appealing to the students. These analogies become more powerful as the students progress to the more challenging levels. When the class is able to successfully complete the concentration challenge level one, they may proceed to the next level. Every class's rate of progress is different. Some classes are able to move on to the next level after one day, while others remain at this level for several days. To encourage a class to progress to the next level, the teacher tells students that there's a more challenging version of this game, but they cannot progress to it until they master the current level. Do not tell them what the next level includes. Their curiosity and the challenge will motivate them to master the level. Another way to encourage the class to progress is to make the concentration challenge an elimination game. If students lose their concentration during the activity, they must step out of the circle and sit down. At the end, the students who are left standing are those with the strongest muscles. Level 2 provides an opportunity for students to maintain their focus when challenged by a peer. Instead of the teacher walking around, a student from the class takes that role. There is usually great excitement about who is picked to be the leader. Once a leader is selected, the teacher should give the students a few seconds to laugh or smile before locking on their focus points. Teachers should remind the leader that they cannot talk, make any sounds, or touch the students. The teacher follows the student leader around the circle and offers encouraging comments. Here are some students participating in level two. I'm going to make this game harder and see how strong you are and how much you can guard your concentration. I'm going to pick a person to walk around the circle and they're going to look you in the eyes. It will be harder because you know this person now. Elof is going to be the person that walks around and looks us in the eye this time. Now that you know it's her, you might want to laugh or smile and just get it out of your system, <laughs> right? Everybody ready? Freeze your body. Lock your eyes on your focus point. You are not going to look at Elof. You are not going to give her your million dollar jewel. Ready? Go. You guys are being very strong. Don't look at her. Don't give it away. Good job. Almost over. Don't lose it now. Wow, everybody held on to it. Give yourselves a big clap. Woo, breathe, relax. While it was not shown in the video, I give several students the opportunity to take turns being the leader when we play this game. Simply based on their personalities, some students are more challenging leaders than others. The young girl I chose to be the volunteer in the segment you just watched struck me as having a more reserved, quieter personality. I'm certain that there were a few students in that class that could have stolen some jewels of concentration just by merely looking at their classmates. So be sure to give several students the chance to be the leader. When level two is mastered, the class is ready for the next level. Level 3 provides an opportunity for students to maintain their focus when challenged by sounds and or funny faces. This time, the leader does not have to be silent or neutral. The leader is encouraged to make as many crazy faces and distracting sounds as possible in an attempt to steal concentration. Teachers should not allow leaders to use words, just sounds. Many times students say derogatory statements to get others to lose their focus and the activity turns harmful. So limit the activity to sounds only. I think when you see the students at this level, you will realize the self-discipline and control many students have begun to master in a short time. Should we make that harder? Yes. Looking for someone with those real crazy faces and can make those crazy sounds to really steal concentration. What's your name? Allie. Allie's gonna come around, right? Everybody, you want to laugh, smile, now that you know it's her? This is going to be hard. Ready? Just get rid of it. If somebody else laughs, 
What are you going to do to help them get their concentration back? You're not going to laugh with them, right? You're going to be silent so they can get their concentration back. You ready, Allie? Mm -hmm. Everybody, find your focus point. Freeze your body. You may want to grab your hands. This could be tough. Ready? Go. Good job. Keep moving. Excellent. Oh, don't let anyone distract you. Good job. Boy, you guys are tough. Hold on to it. Don't give it to her. Good job. Oh, keep going. Excellent. Think of something else. Don't give it away. Good job. Keep moving. Keep moving. Good. Don't give it to her. Hold on to it tightly. Don't look at her. Hold tight. Oh, she's so strong. Good job. <laughs> All right, guys, hold tight. Don't want to give her your jewel. Good job. Don't listen to anybody else. Let's help them concentrate, everybody. Even though she's past you, you still want to hold on to your concentration. <laughs> Let's help them out. You guys should still be looking at your focus point. Keep moving. Keep moving. I think the more consistently that warm-up activity is used, the stronger that concentration and focus muscle gets. At first, it could be exciting and new to the class, and there may be a lot of laughter and loss of concentration, but day after day, they'll really start to focus, and you'll be able to take them to higher levels of focus and concentration. Good job. Excellent. It brought them all together, and it made that unity. And afterwards, they'd done it, and they were together. And wow. I think it, it was just a bond. And then the next time they go to do something, I think they're going to feel freer to um, express themselves in front of each other. Because there's always that thing, is this cool or is this not cool? And, you know, are, is anyone going to laugh at me? And Remember, even though you don't see it in the video, with all the levels of this activity, you can tell students that those who lose their concentration and smile will be disqualified and will have to step out of the circle. Remind students that they are still participating in the activity before and after the leader has reached them. They must stay focused on their point and not laugh until everyone has had a turn or they are disqualified. This obviously is most challenging at level three. I didn't ask anyone to sit out in the video because it was their first exposure to this activity and I wanted each student to feel some success and grasp the challenges of the game. If I were to use this activity over the course of time, the disqualification becomes an important factor in holding their interest and challenging them to stay in the game. It was fun, I'm sure, to watch Allie's incredible faces and to see the students try their hardest not to give in to laughter. What you may have missed is the very important role I was playing during the activity. I was not only prompting the leader to keep moving and to not pick on one or two students, but I was also providing constant coaching to the students in the circle, praising their efforts and offering encouragement. I did this at every level of the activity, but let's watch level three again, and this time, as hard as it might be, do not focus on the leader and her crazy faces. Listen to what I am saying as she walks around. And note also that my tone is that of a facilitator, not a disciplinarian. Be tough. Ready? Go. Good job. Keep moving. Excellent. Oh, don't let anyone distract you. Good job. Boy, you guys are tough. Hold on to it. Don't give it to her. Good job. Oh, keep going. Excellent. Think of something else. Don't give it away. Good job. Keep moving. Keep moving. Good. Don't give it to her. Hold on to it tightly. Don't look at her. Hold tight. Oh, she's so strong. Good job. All right, guys. Hold tight. Don't want to give her your jewel. Good job. Don't listen to anybody else. Let's help them concentrate, everybody. Even though she's past you, you still want to hold on to your concentration. Oh. 
Let's help him out. You guys should still be looking at your focus point. The students love this activity. It need only take five to ten minutes, so feel free to come back to it several days out of the week. Each time you use the activity, start at level one and progress to the next level only if the students are able. Concentration levels vary from day to day. Some days you will stay at level one, and others you will make it all the way to level three. When you feel the class is capable of maintaining concentration, you are ready to create a tableau. Step one of our four-step lesson plan was preparation. Step two is creating the tableau. During step two, it will help to keep in mind that as the teacher, you are playing three different roles. At some points, you will be a director. Other times, you'll be an encourager. And there will also be times that you are a gentle enforcer. Let's take a look at what each of these roles will look like and sound like. Oh, level good. Who's going to be the man who's helping him out pointing in the back? You would like to be that. When students create a tableau as a full class, the, right, the students are really relying on the teacher now, to be the artist, to, to be the director. Be the teacher is the eyes right of the tableau. So Next, the teacher the needs to be able to tell the students if someone needs to move to balance the picture, if the levels aren't quite right, or there aren't enough levels, or if somebody's not freezing, or their eyes are moving around. These are aspects of a tableau a student involved in the tableau might not be able to see for themselves. So they're going to rely on the teacher to give them that feedback. Let's put the tree right here, right? Arbor. Bueno. Excellent. In addition to playing the role of director, the teacher plays the role of encourager, praising all serious efforts and thus provides a safe environment in which students will feel free to risk and explore. Oh, that's perfect. Excellent job. Thank you for joining our tableau. The third role teachers play is gentle enforcer. Let's go back. Should we try that again? As gentle enforcer, the teacher reminds students of the appropriate use of their voices and bodies during tableau work. The teacher recognizes that it takes practice for students to achieve greater focus and self-control. Now you know why we practice. You guys gave your jewel away real quick. All right, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Let's pull it back. Now that you know the parts you will be playing during the tableau activity, let's talk about how to actually create a tableau. Creating a tableau by recreating a picture, a painting, or a photograph is the most effective way to introduce tableau to students. By starting with a pre-existing picture, the tableau process is simplified. The poses and locations are predetermined. Students simply select their roles and freeze in place. You are copying the picture by using your bodies instead of paints and a canvas. In preparation, the teacher selects an appropriate painting or photograph from which students will create a tableau. The most appropriate works are those that include a large number of people and objects that students can portray. The pictures may be selected from such sources as literature or history textbooks, picture books, newspapers, or online sources for art prints and slides. If the image is small, projecting it on a screen allows the entire class to continually view the picture as they build the tableau. Do not tell the students the picture's title so that it does not influence the student's interpretation of the picture. Later in the process, students will invent their own title for the work. Invite the students to carefully study the picture and lead a discussion eliciting students' observations about the composition, such as what people are in the picture, what are they doing. Discuss what objects are in the picture and why they are important or what they symbolize. Talk about the setting and the environment of the picture. And finally, discuss the mood and meaning. After the class has analyzed the picture, Ask them to share ideas for the picture's title. The teacher selects one title from the class suggestions. 
Let's watch this process in action. I'll start each lesson with a warm-up activity that will introduce and reinforce the three elements of acting and the skills we'll be using throughout our work. When I turn this projector on, you're going to see a great big picture come up. I'm going to give you just a minute to look at the picture. Decide who's in the picture, what are they doing, how does that picture make you feel. You ready? Let's talk about what you see in this picture. It looks like there's some pe people maybe helping slaves. Yes, some people are helping some slaves. What are they doing to help these slaves? And they're, they're providing them with clothing. What else are they providing them with? They're providing them with food also. Who do you think those people are that are helping the slaves? Who could they be? Maybe members of the Underground Railroad. What about that picture tells you that it's from the Underground Railroad? What clues do you see? They're coming out from like a cellar or something that's kind of hidden. And then the man's like showing them where they should go. It looks like another house would be down there that the slave can go to to get help or to stay at. Yes, there's another house down. And what's coming out from the house? What do we see? Light. There's light coming from the house. What's right over the house? What's up in the sky? The moon. The moon, right? So what time of day is it? Night. It's nighttime. So we see people helping slaves on the Underground Railroad. They're pointing in the direction they should go. They're giving them food and clothing. How do the slaves look? What, what emotion do you think they're feeling right now? It's like they came from a poor place. Uh, they're, they're probably feeling pretty happy because they're almost free. They're almost to that house with the light. And now they have food and clothing and they're safe. Right. A man painted this picture in 1938. His name was James Penny. What would you call this picture? Let's give it a title. The Underground Railroad. We could call it the Underground Railroad. Does someone have a different idea? Let's move all the way down here. Um, freedom. Freedom. The era of good feeling. The slave's freedom. Um, a helping hand. A helping hand. Today, we're going to make this picture with our bodies. We're going to make it right here so we're beside the real picture. And when we finish making it, let's call it a helping hand. All right. Now you are ready to create the tableau. Remember that the students will be recreating exactly what was in the picture, not making up anything new. Start by showing the students the space in which the tableau will be created and where an audience would be if they were looking at the tableau. Help students place themselves in an appropriate location and at an appropriate level in the tableau. Let them volunteer for parts as opposed to assigning parts. Once everyone has a place, call one, two, three, freeze. And students freeze, thus forming a tableau. Then provide feedback. As the eyes for the group tableau, the teacher-director appraises its clarity. Ask students to make specific adjustments. Make sure that what the students are doing is exactly what the picture is showing, including placement and mood. Let's watch the class make their tableau. Now, when we make the picture, we want to make it right beside this one. We're going to imagine someone looking at our picture is standing right over this way. So our focus point wants to be out that way. And if we're looking at that picture, what do we see that's right in the middle of our picture? Mid-level in the picture, what would we put right in the center? A chair with a man sitting. A chair with a man sitting on that chair. So I need somebody right in the center of our picture. Would somebody like to be the chair that the man is sitting on that block? It's almost like a bench, right? How, what could you do with your body? Would you like to be the chair right in the middle? Show me right here what you could do. Perfect job. Who would like to be that man sitting on the chair? Right? 
let's come on up here. And you're sitting right there. You're sitting on that chair, right? And because this is going to take a few minutes, how about you not sit on him the whole time? <laughs> when we're ready, I'll ask you to sit down, right? Now, there is the man standing behind putting the jacket on him. Who would like to be the jacket? You like to be the jacket. Come around here. Who would like to be that man putting the jacket on him? You would like to be him. Come over here. So what could you do with your body to show me you're that coat? Good job. And you're the man, right? And you're bending over and you're kind of looking at this man. It will be easier when he's sitting down. So you, how about you go medium level, right? That way she can look over. Good. And you'll be sitting down, right? Next, we need that lady. She's over on this side. She's, she's handing the food to him as he's sitting there. Who would like to be that person? Could you come up here? And you would stand right over there. Would somebody like to be the food? How could you make the food with your body? You want to be the food? Come over here. Right? You're going to be right here. And your level is probably going to be mid-level. There you go, right in the middle. And you're, right, somehow you'll figure out how to hold him. Right? <laughs> right here in front, we have those people coming up out of the cellar. Would anyone like to be the seller that they're coming out? There's the door and there's the, it looks like they were underground. You two would like to be the seller? Come over here. How could you make that seller with your bodies? And we'll need someone coming out of you. Now we need, so, we need two people coming out of the seller. One, two. Right? How about you be the, the man who's almost out of the seller and you be the man who's all the way down in the cellar? Right? So you step more over this way. Good. We need someone helping you out. And you're all the way down. You're low level. You're low level. Good. Who's going to be the man who's helping him out, pointing in the back? You would like to be that person. Come over here. Pointing all the way, right? And you're pointing your arm that way. Excellent. Now, we do have a little bush that's right here. Would anyone like to be that bush? You want to be the bush? Come right here. Next, all the way back here, we need the moon. Who's really tall? The moon's going to be high in the sky. You tall? Come over here. Tall moon, and right under the moon is the house with the light on. Who wants to be the house? Come over here. You can be the house with the light on. Right, you're all the way back here. Would anyone like to be the pathway? The path that leads to the house? Anyone feel tired and want to lay on the ground? <laughs> And then we might need some of those trees. Would you like to be a tree? No, what part did you want to be? You don't want to be in this picture. Did you want to have a part? No. Okay, how about you two sit together right over there and you be our audience. You'll be the eyes for us and you'll tell us how the picture looks, okay? Right? When I count to three, I want you to freeze your body and lock your eyes on a focus point somewhere out here. You ready? One, two, three, freeze. Relax your bodies, but don't go anywhere. When we make a tableau, we want the tableau to tell us a story. And you tell that story through your expression. When I look at your expressions, if we're on a scale from one to ten, and one is the lowest level, 10 is the highest. Some of you are right here, which is like a level five. If I asked you to make your expression a level 10, you might go like this. So when I count to three this time, could you show me your expression at a level 10? You ready? One, two, three, freeze. Much better. When I clap my hands once, I want you to say the title of our picture. A loving hand. And relax. Now that we see how wonderful that picture is, would you two like to find a place in there? Now that we see it? Would you like to be a tree? He's asking where. Yes, come with me. I'll show you where we put the tree. While I'm showing him where the tree goes, you might want to look and see where you want to be in this picture. Let's put the tree right here. Arbor. Bueno. Excellent. Did you find a place in that picture you want to go? Any part you want? Where can we put you? 
There's the pathway that's very important and no one is being the path. Could you be the path for me? Here, I'll show you how. Come with me. You just lay down. Right? You can either lay down on the ground or you can stretch your body out really long. Which would you like to do? Lay down. Lay down. Show me that. And make sure your path goes all the way. Oh, that's perfect. Excellent job. Thank you for joining our tableau. I really liked how you got the last two students involved because you could see they were scared and one, I think, had a language difficulty. But you made it very safe and they did get up and become part of the tableau. That was very good. When I count to three, I want everyone to freeze again because we have two new actors in here. Ready? One, two, three, freeze. When I clap, say the title. Uh, and relax. Let me remind you that our lesson plan has four steps. The first step was preparation. The second step was creating the tableau. We are now at the third step, extending the tableau. In this program, we will focus on using language as an extension. Adding language is the perfect assessment showing a student's comprehension of the role they are playing. Language also helps to make the tableau story clear. So after initially creating the tableau, tell the students that when you tap someone on the shoulder, they get to come to life for a few seconds and describe whom they are and what they are thinking or feeling. Each student will complete the following statement. I am fill in the blank, and I am thinking or feeling, fill in the blank. An example might be, I am a slave, and I am thinking I must escape to freedom. Or, I am a pathway, guiding the fugitives to safety. Objects speak as well as people. If students are part of a small group representing one thing, such as four students who may have joined together to play the pathway, they may speak in unison. After students say their lines, they resume their frozen stance. As you watch the class on the videotape, notice how their language varies from the most basic of information to some very rich and descriptive expressions. Anywhere. <laughs> if somebody walked in the room right now and saw you, they would see a wonderful picture, but they wouldn't know that he's a bench or a chair or that he is a path over there, or that you're a church. So we need to tell them. So, if I come by and tap you on the shoulder, I want you to come alive for three seconds and tell me who you are and what you're doing. So you might say, I am a chair, and I am providing a comfortable place for a tired slave to sit. You might say, I am the moon, and I am providing light for the slaves to see by. You want to tell me who you are and what you're doing, even if you're a tree or a house or a wall. You might say, I am, fill in the blank, and I am doing or feeling or thinking, fill in the blank. So you're going to tell me two sentences. I am is sentence number one and I'm thinking or feeling sentence number two. Talk with a neighbor, tell them what you're going to say if I tapped you on the shoulder. But everybody needs to be ready to tell me who you are and what you're thinking. And you need to stay frozen the whole time. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three, freeze. I am a bush and I am blocking the view of white people. Excellent. Freeze. I am the seller helping slaves escape. Perfect. I am a slave going out of the cellar. Excellent. I am a slave and I'm sitting on a comfortable bench. Perfect. I am a jacket about to provide warmth for a tired slave. I am a man putting a jacket over the tired slave. Excellent. 
I am a house with light. I am the moon that brights at night. Excellent job. Coming all the way over here. Oh, what are you doing? I am a woman, feeling so sorry for this tired, hungry slave. Excellent. You guys are doing a great job freezing. When I clap, could you say the title for me one last time? Freeze your bodies. I know it's hard. You ready? A helping hand. And relax. Whew. Good job. Give yourself a great big clap. You are amazing. I like the way that you use children to be inanimate objects because, um, and that they had to speak as well, and that they could think of ways that they were part of the Underground Railroad instead of just being a bush, ways that they helped. I was thinking about the word ownership. You did not, although we have the picture in front of us, and we know the title of the picture, you insisted on the class to come up with a title. And I think when you do that kind of thing with the class, they begin to have the ownership that they need, then they can really begin to really understand the picture as a community within that classroom. Students love to lead tableaus. Once the teacher has modeled the process, it's incredible to ask a student to then become a director to say, here's a picture. Could you direct this class? Could you make sure everybody is in the right place? The first time language is added, I'm not concerned with how quiet a student is speaking or if the thoughts and feelings of that character are fully expressed. My objective in the initial implementation of language is just to have everyone verbalize something. The next time we do it, I may challenge certain students to revise and refine their comments. The ultimate goal is for the student to fully understand exactly what their character was thinking or feeling at that moment. Think about a writing activity at this point. If after completing this activity, students were asked to write about what was happening in this picture, imagine how descriptive, comprehensive, and emotional the writing might be as compared to writing about this picture without having participated in this activity. Also take a moment to reflect on the essential understanding the students will walk away with. Was this something that will be stored in their short-term memory, only to surface when they take a test the next day and then be forgotten? Or did they not only memorize something, but actually understand it, so that it becomes a larger part of their life experience that they can recall and draw on years from now? The final step Step four of our lesson plan is closure. As a closure to the lesson plan, it is important to remind the students about the acting tools and skills they have been using. We also want to praise the students for their efforts and let them take a bow and receive applause for their work. Let's take a look. As a way to say goodbye, I'd like you to stand up right in our C shape. And we're just going to review all those acting skills and tools that we use today. Everybody make your C one last time. So let's bend over and touch our toes. Slowly stand up. Remind yourself that today we used our bodies. Stop here. Today we also used our voice. Keep moving up. We also used our imagination. Close your eyes. We created an empty space at the beginning of this class. Let's fill it with everything we learned about the Underground Railroad and everything we learned about acting. And once we've filled that room up, let's open our eyes, stretch our arms up nice and high, and let's bring our arms down on the person's shoulder or back beside us. And in a serious way, we're gonna tell the person beside us, they did a good job today. Good job today. Did a good job. And then we're going to put our arms down, put one hand on our stomach, one hand on our back, and take a bow. Thank you very much. Great work. Give yourself a clap. I thought your warm-up made a tremendous difference, that you worked with them on body concentration. The concentration would not have been there if you hadn't done that initial exercise. I like the fact that you did not make it a piece that they had to perform. 
I think sometimes we put emphasis on performance. And I think the kids at this point, they were working on the actual pro the process of what they were doing, and they didn't focus so much on performing it. When we use Tableau in the classroom, students are developing cooperation skills. They're developing concentration skills and really learning to focus. Throughout their day, there are so many distractions, and it's a real challenge for them to focus on what they're doing. When we use Tableau, it really gives them that moment to pull in and try to block everything else out so they're completely focused on only one small task. During the reflection and closure, the teacher leads a reflection in which students recall and analyze their experience. Using the actor's ritual, the closure brings students full circle reinforcing students' understanding of the actor's tools and the need for cooperation and collaboration. The teacher may ask students questions that help them reflect on the experience, such as, how did it feel to be in a tableau? What did you learn about the character or object you portrayed? What did you learn about the people or event that the tableau depicted? What did you learn about acting? What was most challenging? most fun, most surprising. Let's look again at some of the student reflections from earlier. I liked acting out parts that weren't like just people, that were things. It was hard because some people had to hold like that. Like some people can't be like still. And so that was so hard. It's also, you have to stay focused on your focus points so much, it's hard because you can get distracted easily. Like, like, it's fun also at the same time. Let's listen to another class reflect on the experience they had. Yes. Let's review what we've been working on today, our acting skills. Right? Here we go. Close your eyes. At the beginning of the class, we cleared out a space in our minds to put some new information. Could you take something you liked about what we did today and put it in that open space? I felt like I was living in the time of slavery that we did today and put it in that space. I had a feeling that I was actually one of the slaves. I learned that the Underground Railroad wasn't really a railroad. I felt that I was actually um, in the Underground Railroad. You want to portray the story as best as you can. You had to put a lot of emotion in your feeling. Having a focus point and concentrating on your focus point. They have different levels. Some people are high, some people are low. Open your eyes, stretch your arms up high in the air. Keep your face blank. Put your arms down on the person's back or shoulder beside you. And in a serious way, don't make it a joke, tell the person on either side of you, they did a good job today. I thought that warm up was really good. And I was taken by the fact that he get, did the same warm up for all the grade levels and it worked equally well. And then before they left, again, bringing them full circle, so that part of the drama wasn't, wasn't lost on them. We just heard some students reflecting on their work. Let's listen to some teachers reflecting on the use of Tableau as a teaching strategy. A terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Freeze. Excellent job. Give yourselves a great big clap. Wow. I like the way they um, were able to use things that they learned in class and take it a step further. I think they'll understand that period of time more if they're explaining who they are and 
what they're thinking at the time, which is one of our goals is to take on the perspective of a, another person in another period of time. So I think by doing that, we'll get more at the soul of what was happening during that period of time than just reading the text and discussing it. So I think the Tableau activity helps kids learn things quicker in a serious way, but yet in a fun way. I was really impressed with how actively engaged some of my students were. Some of the children that I gen generally have trouble keeping engaged in activities were volunteering and answering questions and talking where they normally don't. It's an instantaneous evaluation tool. You know, you'd get instant feedback as a teacher. You'd get that assessment of who's following what I'm talking about. It tells you right away whether they understand it. It's, you don't have to give a test or a quiz. I am a man putting a jacket over the tired slave. I, I wanted to add something about the dramas being something that some teachers are uncomfortable with. I think some teachers are uncomfortable with it because they see it as an extra thing, just another thing to do. But with Tableau, I see that it's a way to engage the students in meaningful learning and helping them understand the concept because these are not cute ideas, they are real learning objectives. I hope you will benefit from today's program and I wish you all the best in your journey to integrate meaningful drama strategies into the curriculum. If you enjoyed today's program and would like to learn more about using Tableau in the classroom, you may order the Living Pictures Video Workshop by contacting the Kennedy Center at 202-416-8813 or go to the website at the address on the screen. The video workshop packet includes an 80-minute instructional video, 20 teacher guides, a facilitator's guide, and a CD of the music from the warm-up activity. In closing, let's watch another class apply Tableau to their study of the Underground Railroad. These students worked in small groups created original tableaus based on historical facts. They wrote a rhyming verse and added movement. Play some music. Freeze. Places. One, two, three, freeze. Group number one, action. These are the slaves running away, going to a free state.